What's going on guys? It's Kyle again with DTOM Knives and Gear and today I have something a little different to share with you guys. I have two knives that look very very similar but this one is a 940-2 and this one is the 9400. This is the manual, this is the automatic. Which one do I like better? Hmm, stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. Okay, let's get into this. The 940 is a knife that I have been wanting to try out for a, a long time. Um, I kind of, it's kind of weird that I haven't had in my hand a 940. Uh, this one was sent to me by my good friend Jeremy. There is his Instagram, uh, at freakshow underscore EDC. Uh, go check him out. He also does some wicked sharpening and these knives are awesomely, awesomely sharp because he sharpened them himself. Go check him out. I will have his link down in the description. Oh, I'm knocking everything off here. Uh, so definitely go check him out, sir. I really appreciate you letting me check these out now. So I was super excited. And of course I was like, man, 940, it's the newest one. Which one do I want to carry first? I actually decided to carry the manual version first uh, because I was like, okay, I want to get the the full experience of the 940 before I get to the automatic. So I carry this one first. This is the Dash 2, and this is the one that has the G10, which I love the G10. I actually like the G10 more than I do the aluminum, uh, but... You know, uh, the both of them are fine. I, I, I would, if this one had aluminum, I'd still like it, you know, but I just, I think I like the G10 on this one a lot better. They both are in S30V. Uh, the action on this one, I'm telling you, on some of the, some of the Benchmades, like the ones that I've got, the action has just been awesome, but I've, I've had a couple of coworkers that have bought some Benchmades since I started collecting knives and they started to hold them and stuff. And they're, some of their, um, it's still kind of weird on their quality control. Like I said, I have not had any problems at all. But I had a buddy of mine who bought, who uh, ordered a Benchmade, and uh, not only did the action come in kind of crappy, but the Omega Spring broke. Now, granted, they took care of him. Uh, you know, maybe maybe took a little bit longer than what the uh, Kobe was. The, Kobe is the guy that I work with who bought the knife. Shout out, Kobe. Love you, man. Uh, but the Omega Spring broke, and it was a big ordeal. He was like, oh my gosh, I paid all this money. And well, I felt bad too, because I was, you know, just kind of pushing him. I was like, yeah, man, Bench Rage, great company. They did take care of him. He's got his knife back now. The action is better. They sharpened it for him. It has a, you know, Omega Spring and the action just works great. So I, uh, I, this action is perfect. I mean, it feels, you know, Similar to the action that I have on the Benchmade Super Freak, which is one of my favorite knives. I absolutely love this thing. And then, of course, you know, the only bench, other Benchmade that I have at the moment is the Crooked River. I mean, the action on it is stellar. So, I, I don't know. Maybe it was just a fluke thing. So, I love the axis lock, and I love the fidginess of the axis lock. It, it really does make me happy. The slim profile of this knife is, you know, undeniably you know, very, very popular. This knife has been out for a long time. So many variations, so many different steels. I mean, this thing is just, you know, you could really get one that just tickles your fancy more than anything else because they have so many different variations, carbon fiber, S90V, blah, 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 blah. Uh, do I like it just in its blank form, uh, you know, or just in the, you know, with this G10? It's a very comfortable knife. I, uh, ergonomics wise, I tend to, when it's a slimmer knife or a thinner knife, um, you know, this way, like it to be a little bit fatter that way, or excuse me, this way. I'm not, I'm sure you're catching what I'm trying to talk because I'm horrible at this, Blah. but, uh, you know, it, whenever I wrap my big meat hooks around it, you know, and really get a golf grip, I can, you know, I'd rather not be able to just wrap my hands all the way around it, but it's not to the point to where I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's like a gorilla shaking hands with a midget. You know, it's not like that, but it's close. <laughs> so Definitely a four finger knife. I've got enough, uh, enough of a grip there that I feel very locked in. Uh, it has a little bit of jimping right here, but my thumb doesn't rest there, so it doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, it lands back here. It doesn't have jimping. I am okay with that. Don't really care. Uh, so, but this thing performs very well and it performs surprisingly well due to the fact that both of these knives, now these have been sharpened by, you know, a guy who knows what he's doing. Um, but, and I don't know if the thinness behind the edge is different on a factory edge or not. These are pretty thick behind the edge. 
But let me tell you, <laughs> I, uh, wow, this thing cuts and cuts. I mean, like when I measured it, I was like, oh man, it's, it's a little bit thicker than I'm used to. It didn't matter. <laughs> it really didn't matter. I was cutting paper, you know, boxes. This is the regular EDC task. And, uh, man, does this edge, and well, this is a testament to Jeremy. You know, he, he puts a damn good edge on his knives. So, you know, it's one of those things. And you can kind of see this one's a little bit polished, but it's been used. It's been used, uh, you know, it was used whenever it wasn't just like freshly sharpened and he sent it to me. He definitely used this blade. I've used this blade. And, uh, you know, S30V, good still, still very, very sticky sharp. So, very, very cool. This one is actually a first production. If I can get it to focus. Not on this side. S30V Osborne. Yeah, it is. I thought this was the first production. No, it's this one. Blech. I'm an idiot. This one is the first production. So that's super cool. First production knives are always cool to be able to grab with uh, with Benchmade. They used to put, I think, numbers on their first productions, and then they kind of got away with that. And this is a newer model. So, so anyway, as far as the 940 as a whole, you can kind of choke up right here. It's not that bad, but I'm kind of afraid, especially how sharp he put this knife. I don't know if I'll put my finger up there or not. But the 940 as a whole, I think, is a good, good knife. I really, really do. Very thin, goes in and out of the pocket well. Deep carry pocket clip. Oh, yeah, I forgot to show you. Look at it. It was cool. I do like the pop of color that they put on the black G10 and the uh, green barrel spacers. Camera, stop it. There you go. So that's super cool. Really, really like that. And, you know, and in that same sense, this is still, you know, the original way I think that the Osborne came, look out, uh, which is the purple backspacer gear pattern thing. I really don't even know what you'd call that with the green aluminum handles, classic Osborne, classic 940. That's the way that these things originally looked. This one's got a mini deep carry pocket clip, which is actually really, really awesome. Um, but this one's an automatic. And if you guys know that I, or have been watching my channel, you know that I have uh, had a few pro ticks here um, recently. And so I'm usually not a automatic guy I'm, I'm, or an assisted opening guy. I'm really not. However, I got a couple of pro ticks, kind of fell in love with them. And so I was really interested to see what this one compared to as far as that. Now, the as far as the opening... Feels about the same. I mean, it rockets out of there. The spring tension is not that bad, which was usually what my problem was with most automatic knives to be able to close one handed. So it's not as intuitive as the, uh, you know, the ProTech magic for me to be able to get this thing closed really fast. Uh, so well, let's just go ahead. And then the other one I have is the ProTech SNG. Uh, so as far as the action, you know, they both snap out hard really hard and we'll just throw this one in there uh for right now now here's my quandary with automatics so this one i haven't touched i played with this so much just a tiny tiny bit of blade play in this one and i might be able to get that out i haven't actually tried this one even less blade play it, you know, this one locks up solid. Is that this is the magic whiskers? Uh, this one locks up solid. When I first got this one and played with it, uh, I opened it up and it had massive blade play. But what had happened was the pivot just got a little bit loose. So I always carry a Leatherman and a bit set, and I uh, snugged it up, and I ended up snugging it up so much that it wouldn't fire. So I was like, okay. So I backed it off and I got it to where it fires great and the blade play is not near as bad as it was, but there's still blade play in it. I don't even know if you can see it, but there is. It's a, it's considerably more on this knife than it is on this knife, even though this one does have it. I just feel it. I feel it less on this one than I do with this one. And this one has none. So there's probably a way to alleviate some of that. Uh, but I'm not going to really mess with somebody else's knife. Uh, it doesn't really hurt the performance of the knife. It's just something to be aware of. There are, there are a lot of knives that have a little bit of blade play that last forever. Uh, I just, I think that this one, uh, would absolutely last forever. It probably is, uh, it's probably just needs to be something else done other than that pivot to be 
Um, tightened, I'm not exactly sure, but it's a thing. It's just a little bit more blade play than the other automatics that I have. Still love the knife, and I think I would like to have a Osborne, a 940. Which one would I rather have, though? <laughs> uh, okay, well, you probably already know that automatics are not usually my thing. I do like to fidget with knives, and half part of the fidgety factor is not just open. I mean, obviously, automatics are the best for opening because, bam, you know, it's just there. Uh, but closing is also a fidget factor for me. I just love a manual knife. So if I had to choose between these two, then I would definitely choose the, um, the uh, manual version. Now, the Osborne... 940 has always been a little bit pricier of a knife than a lot of people think it should be. Uh, and like I said, that price varies drastically because of the different things that you can have as far as the handle material and the steel material. This one is about 175 bucks. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, uh, I think this knife has great fit and finish. The Ergos is good. The steel is good. I really think this would, I mean, it, it is. It makes a great EDC knife for a lot of people because this thing is probably one of their most popular models. One of. This one, the 9400, uh, is about $230. So it's, it's, a, it's almost exactly the same knife. You have aluminum. I'll both have an S30V, but it's, it's a lot more expensive because it's an auto. Uh, and, you know, I forgot who says it most. I think, um, you know, I think it was Slicey I heard it from first. That you pay kind of an upcharge for an auto. Um, and I do believe that's true. You know, would, would I pay the 220 bucks or 210 bucks that I paid for this knife um, if it wasn't an auto and if it was just a regular backlock or something? Hell no. Heck no. I would not pay that for a backlock knife, even if it was the fit and finish was just as good. Uh, wouldn't do it. Uh, but because it was an automatic and it has this, you know, really cool hidden little lock, uh, I thought it was worth it and I picked it up. This one, yeah. I would, if I wanted an, uh, if I was a huge, you know, 940 fan and I had a collection of these, you have to have one of these. Hands down. If you've got a handful of these because you love the uh, 940 so much, this one is a necessity in the collection, 100%. I would, if I was just to, to get an uh, 940, I would go with this one. Definitely the G10. If I was to have the manual with the aluminum, I don't think I'd like it as much as I would the uh, G10 or their carbon fiber. I heard it's pretty good, but of course it's more expensive. So, uh, yeah, let's, you know, let's go ahead and kind of see where it falls, which there's so many videos on this guy. This is, you know, there's the PM2. So it's a little bit smaller than the PM2, definitely thinner. So it carries a lot better. Uh, the only other EDC knife, you know, that I like to compare it to is the TRM Atom. You know, you do have S30V here, and I'm sorry, 20CV here, S30V here. But as you can see, as far as comparison size-wise, definitely still thinner on the Osborne than it is on the Atom. Uh, as far as th this way, it is a little bit thicker. That way, the blade stock is a little bit thicker. So you have that. Uh, so it really is, as far as, you know, an EDC knife, a great one to have, a great one to carry. Um I'm I'm not sure if I'm going to have one in my collection yet. I just might. Uh, it's it's getting there, <laughs> you know. The overall length on this guy is about 7.87 inches. It's got a blade length of 3.4 and a blade thickness of 120 thousandths. So it's about it's great dimensions for an EDC knife. It carries astronomically well uh, with this. I actually prefer. Like the deep carry clip, like I don't, you guys know I don't need, I don't have to have deep carry clips, but I actually really prefer the small one and I never thought I would. I always thought that I would, uh, prefer the longer pocket clip, but this thing works really awesomely. So I, 
if you, you know, a lot of people probably are not like me and they have to have a deep carry clip on a lot of, on all their knives. I mean, you can call and get this thing for like five bucks. So I don't even know why I haven't done that because it's not like I really have a preference, but if it's five bucks, I probably should for my other Benjamin knives. I haven't done it yet. So I really, really dig that. So yep, yeah, basically long story short, if you're still here, I would probably choose, or I know I would choose the manual version over the automatic 940. Uh, I just, I think it's classic. I think it's great. I think it's functionally fine. Um, I don't know if I would call this hard use, uh, but you could definitely, do, I would say light to medium use. And some people might even get mad at that. You probably can do some harder tasks with this. I, you, you really can. It's just, it's not, it's not very thick blade. So I don't know. You probably could. It just probably wouldn't be the knife that I grabbed to do some hard work. Uh, however, it's very comfortable in the hand. Wish it was just a little bit wider this way because I think it would fill my hand just a little bit more. But I know that's part of the design that a lot of people like is the slimness of it. So take that for what it is. Guys, I really appreciate you stopping by. Jeremy, I really appreciate you sending me both of these knives to check out. This was a great experience for me to be able to carry both of these, figure out which one I might like better, uh, have fun with the fidget factor of this one, and have fun with the automatic feature of the 9400. And, uh, man, it was it was just awesome. Guys, thank you so much. Subscribe, hit that like button, and the notification bell if you want to see more. Uh, and please stay safe in this crazy world that we're living in, and we will see you in the next one.